Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Earhart, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, we will get started with Worksheet 19 on Logistic Regression. I'm going to scroll down to uh, Class 19 and open up the HTML. This is a logistic example regression, which I hope you'll find uh, fairly straightforward. It is best case scenario in fitting a logistic regression. The assignment has to do with alloy fasteners and how much compressive strength you can give to them until the, and whether they break or not. And so there were 10 pressure loads between um, 2,500 pounds per square inch and 4,300 PSI in increments of 200. And at each of those pressures, there were a different number of fasteners being tested and some of those fasteners in each group failed. Okay, so we read in the data set and I'm augmenting the data set with a load at 3400 and missing values for the number tested and number failed so that we can predict that later on. Um, okay, so here's the data set. It's just 11 rows long though that's not how many observations there are. Um, at each pressure load, say 2,500, there were 50 of these fasteners tested, and of those, 10 failed. So this is 50 observations. So if you sum the tested column, that's how many observations there are. Looks like maybe there's about 500 or so. Um, and here's the row at the bottom that we added at 3,400. Notice uh, there isn't a 3,400 PSI in the data set, so we're, um, we're adding a new value that we will, we will want to predict. Okay, so interpret the plot of observed proportions against the load. So I, I'm going to do a bunch of computations for you. Mostly this assignment is about interpretations. So first thing I do is uh, compute the proportion failed. So here, in this case, a success is when is a failure, meaning a, a right in, in logistic regression we're modeling the probability of success, and we can define success however we want. In this case, we're interested in modeling how many what proportion are gonna of these fasteners are gonna fail, how many are gonna break under this pressure, and so this is the proportion of of how many failed p hat. We're going to make a plot, and we get um, the beautiful uh, characteristic sigmoidal curve. It's a very lazy S in this case. So the proportion um, increases from just under a quarter to just over three quarters over this load range of PC PSI from 2,500 to 4,600 or something. Um, okay, uh, so yeah. Uh, comment on how the proportional failures depend on load. So I've already sort of said some of the words that you could use to uh, complete your answer there. Uh, compute the empirical logits and interpret the plot against load. So here um, I've got a place for you to fill in the equation. Okay, so replace the NA with the equation for the empirical logits. This is just going to the notes, finding the equation, dropping it in here, making sure that you make the right variable names. And once you have those, you'll then have a plot, which is not just a horizontal line at NAs, but it will be something else. Probably should be a, basically a straight line with a positive slope. And then once you have those, interpret uh, what you see. Recall that for a simple linear logistic regression, on the logit scale, we should have a straight line with with some slope, probably. Um, on the original proportion scale, we have a curve, the sigmoid, if the if the model fits the data. But on the logit scale, the log of the odds, we should have a straight line, and that's really what you should be commenting on. Do the data on the logit scale follow a straight line? That's the question. All right, fit logistic regression model, interpret deviance, lack of fit. So 
Here we put into the generalized linear model function the failures and um, test minus fails. So it's really, a, a, in terms of Bernoulli trials and what we're modeling, this is really the number of successes and the number of failures in that, in that language as a function of load. Um, in this case, a success is a failure, so I apologize for that confusional detail. Confusional detail. Um, also, after we fit the model and put it into GLM FA, uh, we've got a uh, test for lack of fit, and recall that the null hypothesis here is that the data are fit well by the model, or that the model fits the data, and that's the null hypothesis, and we're assessing against that. So a small p-value would be evidence for lack of fit, meaning the model does not fit the data. So what's your evidence there? Uh, so far, um, you know, so far it looks pretty good. Um, interpret the logistic regression coefficients. So here, does the load can I get, yeah, does load, oops, appear to be a useful predictor of the probability of failure? Okay, so that would mean, does this load coefficient, um, is it basically different from zero? Okay, and you might also interpret not just whether it's significantly different from zero, but, but that it's a positive relationship or a negative relationship. So it's a little bit hard to interpret this coefficient by itself because it only applies to the logit scale for the log of the odds. So this, you can interpret it in terms of log of the odds, but it's hard to interpret back on the probability scale. So it's enough for us in this class to say we've got a positive slope, which is significantly different from zero, um, and maybe say a sentence about what that means in terms of the context of the problem. All right, write the model equation. Uh, did I give this to you already? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, good. This is the log of the odds is a function of the intercept and the slope. Okay, and what I want you to do is write, it, write the equation for the probability scale. So solve this equation for P tilde and write that down here. It has a very simple structure, and you might just go to the notes to make sure you know what that is. I don't require that you have fancy formatting for this equation. You know, it shouldn't necessarily look beautiful like this, but it should be readable and understandable to the teaching assistant who will be grading this. Um, notice this next part has zero points associated with it. I just gave it to you. Plot the fitted probabilities as a function of load. So we, uh, we're we going to predict the, uh, the values. And we're also going to include the standard errors. I'm also going to compute um, the fits on the logit scale and on the probability scale, as well as the upper and lower, lower and upper bounds for on the probability scale. And we plot all that stuff using a ribbon. That The ribbon gives you the, the gray band. We plot the line, which is the red line, and the points. And there we have all of our observed values, which are the black dots, and the predicted values from the model, which is the red line and the red dots. And notice that there's an additional dot in the middle, which is the load at 3,400 that we wanted the model to predict for us. Uh, finally, interpret the prediction with 95% confidence interval at 3,400 PSI. Okay, So provide what the confidence interval is, and then interpret it. And we have already, we've put all that stuff into DAT fastener. So you might just, down here, print out DAT fastener for the row where, you know, filter the row where the load equals 3,400 and select the columns that have the confidence interval in it. That will, that is really what you need to present down here. And then interpret 
that confidence interval. And that should do it. That's the end of the assignment. This is a, uh, boy, I hope in your own research you have logistic regression curves that fit the data as well as this. All right, good luck.